Good day, our dear listeners at home. I welcome you to another episode of Spirit Archive. I'm sure you have been blessed by our series of podcasts and this one is going to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Today we'll be looking at the life of a great man, a great evangelist, an English Christian evangelist and author who focused so much on the subject of prayer and revival you know we everyone has a stand in life you are standing you are either standing with something or you are going against with you are going against something so this man stood basically on the subject of prayer and revival before we move on my name is olua funke i welcome you to this week podcast and i'm so sure that you're going to be blessed the life of Leonard Raven Hill. He was born on the 18th of June, 1907, and he died on the, on the 27th of November, 1994. Like I said earlier, I was an English Christian evangelist and author who focused so much on the subject of prayer and revival. He is best known for challenging Western evangelicalism through his books and sermons, to compare itself to the early Christian church as chronicled in the book of Acts. Hmm. He is so much loved the church to be like what was being written in the book of Acts. You know, going through the book of Acts, it will open your eyes to see how the church started. The church started from the book of Acts after Jesus died and resurrected. He gave power to his disciples and then they started preaching the gospel and from there churches were planted and we can see basically from the book of acts how the church grew you know one major thing the church was committed to then was preaching the gospel healing the sick preaching the good news to people bringing people into the fold and then a series of continuous teaching whereby people would be able to stand firm on their faith this is one thing that Leonard Ravenhill stood for while he was alive. He stood for prayer and revival. He so much wanted the church to evolve into what has been recorded in the Bible and the book of Acts. So this was his major stand. This was what he lived for. And checking through his books and sermons, it was so clear that this was his stand. And while reading some, while reading his quote, I I found out some beautiful points that could be that can, that will be of help to our Christian life. And I noticed from his quote as well that it was not limited to churches alone. Even individual lives are being included. You know, you can't say you are going to church every time and your prayer life is standing still. Then you you have to be questioned. So the, your individual life is also included into his teachings. It's not only about the church because the church is um, a gathering of believers, a gathering of people, and believers are not supposed to be unbelievers. They're not supposed to be behaving like unbelievers. There is a clear difference between the believer and an unbeliever, and his sermons and books and teachings showed them clearly that there is a difference between a believer and an unbeliever but his major stand was basically for the church he stood and made sure he, like his, his life made um, an example of what a church should be you know the church is not supposed to be a refrigerator i read that in one of his quotes he will lead someone to christ and then you ask what church should i take this person to you know he he compared the church of this generation and when it was alive to a refrigerator like when you give birth to a newborn baby and you put the baby in a refrigerator you know that's somehow right so the church nowadays is like a refrigerator whereby you go in and come out and nothing happens you know you're asking people do you feel the presence of god and they're looking like you like it's just normal service whereby it's not supposed to be normal the church of god is not supposed to be a normal playground you know have you heard of a church 
at um, as like 30 acres of land and you're asking what they want to use that for and they're telling you they want to use it to create their own tennis court and if you're like really is the church supposed to be a playground or a place for revival so this was the stand of leonard raven hill while he was alive i'd like to read some of his quotes here and i'm sure you'll be blessed by this in the name of jesus you know he said in one of his quotes that in the in the holy church signs and wonders followed they cast out demons blindness and paralysis that's normal christianity nowadays we are so subnormal if we ever become normal then the world we think we are abnormal hmm. and that is actually true because most of the things we count as abnormal nowadays they are actually what are supposed to be very easy and normal for christians so wow, that's a great one and then he said something that i want to see a fellowship where your burdens become mine your grief over your children becomes my grief where we really bear each other's burdens where we love each other and let the world come to see that we are his followers we are the followers of the meek and lowly jesus who cared only to do the will of his father now i said earlier on that he also mentioned the individual lives in some of his teachings and books uh, you know the, the church is supposed to be a place where burdens are shared not a place where you come with your burdens and you go back with your burdens the, the church is a place where burdens are shared like you come to me we talk about your burdens we pray about it together and it gets solved so it, the church is a fellowship where other burdens become yours where you can share your burdens freely and others can as well share their burdens hmm. he also said we speak thousands of words every day and all these words are accumulated the good words the bad words the criticized words we're so flippant with our words we're so easy with our criticism we stab and we injure and we hurt and God is going to try all my word before a thousand million people. Every word you say is going to be played back someday. The word of God says, man shall give account or for every word that he has spoken for the great word. This is also a challenge to every Christian out there that every word you say has a consequence, both the good and both the bad. Like the Bible said, will give an account of every single word that comes out of your, of your mouth so this is a challenge for us to be so careful with our choice of words you know you can't help what you hear but you can help what your mouth will speak out your reaction to what you hear should be different from how you react with your words and this is what leonard is trying to point out here Mm -hmm. with the use of words we can stab we can injure and we can hurt a million people you will think it's nothing you know i just said mine but like i said every word has a consequence and we've got to be very careful with the church with the choice of our word he also talked about the bible hmm. he talked about the bible the bible and the whole bible is the religion of Christ church yes and the devil's aim today is to keep one away from the Bible hmm then sin we either keep you sin will keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin Wow sin will keep you away from the Bible but you can choose to let the book keep you away from sin so it is your choice like everything boils down to choice so you choose to either stay with the word or you stay with sin but note that when you stay with sin it will keep you away from the word but when you stay with the word it will keep you away from sin you know most people are bothered by the passages of the scriptures which they cannot understand hmm. they are so bothered about the passages of scriptures that they cannot understand that they neglect the ones they understand whereas the ones that are supposed to be a burden to you is the passages 
that you understand because those ones will keep ringing in your mind and they will direct you in the right path may the lord help us in jesus name amen we talk about salvation talk about forgiveness talk about prayer and revival it talked on so many things i would recommend that you go through his books his teachings and a scout to learn a lot of things from this man. This man stood, he, he took a stand with the church. He took a stand on how the church should be. And in this generation, it is very clear that the church is not what it is supposed to be. And it is our responsibility as Christians to do the needful. We are the church. The church is not just a building. We are the church. And if we want the church to grow and become that which the Lord, which is the master of the church, if we want it to become what he has ordained it to be, then we have to be aligned with him. We have to be aligned with him. Wow. Thank you for your time. It was looking short. <laughs> But I'm very glad that you are blessed and I'm very sure that you always remain blessed by the series of our podcast on Spirit Archive. So the next time we meet, I pray that your feet will become more steadfast in the word of God and you will find Christianity enjoyable in the name of Jesus. Once again, my name is Oluafinke Lauren Chupe. See you next time. Bye.